What's up guys, it's your boy Buddy here and this is my very first video and I'm bringing it to you right now and the first video that we're gonna do on this channel is five tips to improve your automotive photography game. So here we go. Tip number one, learn your angles of the car. Every car is different and every single one has a different angle that highlights it the best. But there are some key angles that everyone should know on how to position the car and how to best photograph the car. The first angle is the head-on angle. One car in particular that I really love shooting directly from the front is the Rolls-Royce Ghost, Phantom, Wraith, any of the Rolls-Royce lineup because they have a big presence, a big grill, so it's very, very important that you, you're you able to learn that head-on shot and nail it and master it. So the second angle or position of the car that you want to focus on is the quarter angle shot or the three-quarter angle shot, which is you get 25% of the car from the front or the back or 75% of the car from the front or the back. It just depends on the composition that you're going for and the position of the car and what best highlights that particular car that you're shooting. But one bonus tip that you always want to know is you always wanna have the rim of the car facing directly down the lens. So if the, if the rim is like this, if the rim is like this, you want it facing directly down the lens. You don't want it like this or this because you're gonna get tire in the shot. And trust me, I've posted several Instagram photos where my, my rims weren't faced directly to the lens and uh, I, I got berated several times online. So it's a, it's a very, very amateur move. Uh, it's somewhat forgiving, but it but it, it does show the difference in an amateur and a professional and many, many people focus on the details, which is the next thing that I want to share with you. So tip number three is focus on the details. I'm actually talking about picking a focus for your shot, something that really, really is a, a nice little quirk that Doug DeMuro likes to say or a nice little detail of the car and you want to focus on that. Don't be afraid to get up and close to the car. Coming back to a Rolls Royce. Getting up close and focusing on the spirit of ecstasy is one little detail that, that people love, love to see. So pick a, a small little detail, get up close on it, focus it, highlight it, and really let it shine because people love the details, and especially when you're, when you're uh, focusing on them. Tip number four, yeah. Tip number four, shutter speed. Understand the shutter speed on your camera. I'm not gonna sit here and, and tell you that you need the best, greatest camera out there to, to be successful. You don't need that. Really what you need to know is just understand the tools that you have and know how to use them. And one, one thing that I love to focus on is the shutter speed. I like to play around with different types of shutter speed, not necessarily because um, I'm taking a shutter speed that fits a certain scenario. I'm choosing a shutter speed for artistic purposes. So generally, uh, the rule of thumb is if you're one over 60 or one over 125, that's typically gonna be handheld shots. Uh, there's, there's little blur. It, it's more natural and appeasing to the eye to be in that when you're, when you're handheld. But if you're below one over 60, then it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot more movement, a lot more blur. Uh, rule of thumb is people like to tell you that if you're below one over 60, then you probably should be on a tripod of some sort um, or just have your camera stabilized. But there are times when I'm taking artistic liberties where I, for instance, I shot, I shot Alejandro's McLaren 720S one time as a roller shot and I shot at one over 20, um, mainly because I knew that there was gonna be a lot of blur in the shot and it was, gonna, it was gonna really highlight the car and get a lot of the lights. In this particular example, you'll see that there's no way that I would have been able to pull this shot off without a, a, a good driver who's able to keep the same speed as the 720S on, on the freeway, which, by the way, I wanna make sure that you guys understand, safety first, always have your camera strapped onto you, that you're not able to lose it because if you drop it, it hits another car. That's a big, big problem, and I don't want any of you guys to have to worry about that ever, so, Always, always focus on your safety. Back to the shutter speed. So for that particular shot, I chose one over 20 so that I could so that I could have a lot of blur and a lot of movement. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I had to take a lot of shots to get this just right because I needed to be at the right angle, I needed to get the right light, I needed to get be at the right speed of the vehicle so that so that I could keep the camera steady enough to actually pull off the shot. Probably 200 shots later, I wound up with this one and it's one of my favorite shots of all time. It's not always a perfect process, it never will be, but the more and more that you get out there and shoot and the more and more that you learn and practice your craft, the better you will become. So it's important for you to learn those tips, learn the way that your camera works, 
and, and go for it. You know, it's okay to start on the automatic function of your camera because there's things that you can learn. You can learn the angles, you can learn the position, you can learn the art of composition in those functions. And then as you begin to grow and, and learn to love what you do, then switch over to manual, work with your shutter speed, work with your ISO, work with your aperture, really bring those pictures to life by doing that. Next tip that I wanna, wanna give you is, as I just mentioned, was composition. I love, love working in rule of thirds. And if you don't know what rule of thirds is, it's something that I learned uh, when I was studying film where you break the picture down into thirds. So you basically have a line here, 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 and here. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you basically have nine boxes within your frame. And I, I typically put that grid on my camera whenever I have the ability to. But I love to shoot where I'm I'm taking over those thirds. So I'm looking at the thirds and I'm 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 using it as a guideline of how I, I select the composition of the picture. So for instance, if I'm doing if I'm doing rollers where I'm directly to the side, I want to make sure that I'm right in the in the middle third box. If I'm doing something with a nice little rolling angle where I'm kind of shooting down uh, shooting down the angle of a car on the freeway, I'm gonna try to do my best to cut across the thirds of, of the picture. So there's all these little tips and tricks and, and, and great ways that you can better utilize the composition of the picture to bring your shots to life. Not always is it gonna work out that way to pick your composition, but if you're shooting on a camera that allows you to, to shoot in RAW and have a big resolution file, then you'll be able to crop in and adjust your composition uh, in post-production and you do that in Lightroom to kind of edit your photo and get it the way that you want. I do that all the time. I love to edit the photos afterwards. That's a big, big, big thrill of mine. And I, and I usually know when there's two or three photos from the day's shoot that I know is gonna be a really, really killer shot um, in post-production. So I, I really enjoy and look forward to doing that. Uh, the last tip, which I think is six, even though I said that we were gonna do five tips, the last tip is this is the only thing I'm gonna encourage you to go buy. This is the only thing that I think every photographer who is photographing cars needs, 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 and you can go look on every single tips to being an automotive photographer online, and everyone's gonna tell you to get a circular polarizing filter. Go get one, guys. It, it prevents so many highlights from coming into the picture and gives you a lot more room to edit and work on the photos without part of the photos being blown out. So it's really, really important that you get that. It also takes away a lot of the reflections and gives you the ability to shoot through windows. It, it allows you to avoid those nasty reflections when you're at car shows and you get all these group of people like reflecting on the car. It takes away a lot of that and it gives you more contrast as well. So get you a circular polarizing filter. There's a link for one in the description down below. So really, 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 I encourage you guys to do that. That's it for me today, guys. I'm really, really excited for what's gonna be coming soon. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next. I believe that the next video I'm gonna do is teaching you guys how to vlog. I'm gonna teach you about the equipment that I use. I'm gonna teach you about the best ways to tell a story within that, and basically give you more tools for you to, to learn your craft. And that's what I want you guys to have here is, is more tools for you to go out, have fun, enjoy your time with your camera, shoot photos, shoot videos. Don't be afraid to go out there. Don't be afraid to fail. We all make mistakes, but we learn from those mistakes, and that is the important thing to take away from this, guys. Oh, one last thing. I have a set of How to Be a Gentleman cards. So I wanna leave you guys with one little tip on how to be a gentleman, because I think that that's something that we fail to work on every day, and so I'm going to share this with you as well. A true gentleman knows to always retire himself after he has had one too many. A good rule of thumb, drink the first, sip the second, and skip the third. Well, that's it for me today, guys. I really appreciate you stopping by for my very first video. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload a video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think about my video today, and I would also love to hear if you have any tips that could be useful to me or anybody else in the community that I didn't mention in the video already. All right, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I'll give you a fist bump back and we'll blow it up. Let's get it out of here. See you guys next time.